March 28, 1979. There's only one thing on my mind at 7.50 a.m. that morning. And it was not how to deal with a nuclear crisis. I was vitally interested in securing passage of my first state budget and had made a strategic uh, decision to host a breakfast meeting at the governor's residence uh, to seek some support from Democratic uh, members of the House. I'm a Republican, some of you may not. <laughs> this was a reaching across the aisle exercise, and we were uh, really quite excited about developing some bipartisan support for our fiscal plan. At 7.50 a.m., however, phone call from the State Director of Emergency Management interrupted our meeting. He told me that there had been an accident at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Power Plant, which I knew was just 10 miles downstream from the governor's residence in the middle of the Susquehanna River. I knew immediately that our ambitious agenda for developing bipartisan support for the budget was out the window and that our schedule for the balance of the week at least was likely to be routinely amended by overtaken by events, I think is the way to put it. And what happened in the next five days of course is statistically. I won't try not to bore you with the details, but secondly, don't eliminate anything that would increase your understanding of what the environment was at the time and what challenges remain today. This all began uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning on March 28, 1979, when vital cooling water to this uh, plant was escaping through a valve that had opened uh, at one of the two nuclear reactors at the plant. For the next two and a quarter hours, plant operators failed to read these symptoms correctly, failed to close the valve, and mistakenly shut off an emergency cooling system that otherwise would have operated automatically. The after core overheated, and the worst accident in the history of commercial nuclear power in the United States was well underway by sun of that day. We now know that while some of the reactor fuel heated to the point of melting, a disastrous meltdown as suggested by the Fox and Move of the China Syndrome, was not going to be uh, part of the scenario unfolding. We know now that the deductible, while there were detectable amounts of radiation escaping into our air and water uh, during these days, uh, the amounts were limited and the impact on public health, if any, remains debatable. And we now know that a massive evacuation of up to 200,000 people residing in this area and it's accompanying potential for panic, for injury, and even loss of life could have been far more dangerous and damaging than the accident itself, uh, given the conditions at the time. In any event, when I answered that phone at 7.50 a.m., I knew none of this. And we really were uh, beginning to just get a feel for the office itself. Nuclear power at this time was uh, the technological marvel of our time, to some the ultimate answer to our growing energy problems, a source of electricity once allegedly described as too cheap to meter, and an industry <laughs> whose safety record had been, or at least was thought to have been, second to none up to that time. I had neither reason nor inclination to challenge these assumptions, except perhaps the one about my light bill being too cheap to meter. Nuclear jargon was a foreign language to me, my exposure to emergency management at a nuclear power plant was limited to a perfunctory briefing just after I took office. I knew enough, however, that the thought of issuing a general evacuation order first entered my mind at 7.50 a.m. that morning and never left me throughout the unprecedented days that followed. On the first day, it was not yet clear that the governor would have to personally manage the civilian side of this crisis. But it was very clear that a new administration with ultimate responsibility for public health and safety had better start asking questions 
analyzing answers and preparing for the worst. Because we were so unfamiliar with the existing state bureaucracy and because there simply was no state bureau of nuclear crisis management as such, let alone a precedent to the study, we did something at the outset which was to serve us very well. In lieu of the existing bureaucracy, I assembled what might be called an ad hocracy, a close team of associates whose judgment and confidence I had come to trust, a support group of relevant state specialists whose judgment and confidence were about to be tested under pressures none of them had ever known before. The ad hocracy reported to me only periodically at first. And these reports were sandwiched within other pressing uh, but somewhat routine affairs of state. In other words, we tried to carry on as best we could while still being attentive to the crisis uh, atmosphere that was being created around us. At the outset, we felt it was important to conduct business as usual in the governor's office. Perhaps even more important to appear to be doing so, because panic, as any study has shown, has a way of multiplying Viciously 